talking about rights, could we mention authors' rights? Uh, I think there was an interesting uh, part in the survey as well, right? Because uh, in some countries, uh, you just sign an NDA, you're not allowed mm -hmm. to do anything. And in some other countries, you actually own your work, right? And you get some extra money later on. Could you perhaps uh, tell us a bit more about this? Yes. So in some countries, uh, uh, you, uh, these all uh, this authorship contract is uh, signed, uh, and it you mean uh, it means that you uh, own the translation. Whereas in most cases, I think especially if you work uh, for streamers, for instance, you are not the owner of your. Uh, a translation. Uh, when I used to work uh, for the Croatian public broadcaster, we would sign. That was a, a bit of a silly situation. We would uh, we would sign the the contract authorship contract post festum when we would already uh, have delivered all the uh, translations. Uh, and this was actually uh, now looking back, this was just a way of them finding a legal way to pay us. So uh, there was nothing, and this contract also said one of the lines was, "You are not the owner of, of the of the of, of the translation." So, but you bear all the responsibility, of course, which is also something that is not uh, fair. I think um, I think uh, that there the, the could be a way of paying uh, translators. Um, uh, more, especially now in the age of streaming, for instance, we have been talking about these nano payments, like this uh, the streaming when you stream music uh, model, when where people who are authors of a certain song can get a very small percentage. Yes, yes. So maybe uh, we should explain this because when you own uh, the rights for your translation what happens very often that i don't know at the end of the year or uh, at some some sort of period you get extra money so you were paid first per minute right to translate something and then because the work uh, is streamed or it's been i don't know shown in cinemas or whatever you get some royalties right yes yes uh, just as in uh, um in some other, I don't know, screenwriters, for instance, who are currently on strike in the United States. Uh, but uh, anyway, so th th there are ways, I think, of uh, um, making sure that happens, that uh, these rights are protected better, but uh, not a lot of initiative uh, has been taken by uh, stakeholders, which may change because of the very active work of uh, associations. Well, for instance, Croatian Association managed to achieve um, the, uh, so audiovisual translators are now recognized by the Ministry of Culture as artists. Uh, and you can also, if you fulfill certain conditions, uh, years of experience, quality of work, etc., you can enter, uh, you can uh, become a member of something that it could be best described as the Artists Association. Uh, uh, or become recognized as an artist by the state, and then the state will cover your pension contributions, for instance. You don't have to do it, which are quite steep uh, if you have to do it yourself. So at least, you know, some movement uh, has taken place in uh, some uh, countries uh, towards at least recognizing the work and also uh, monetary uh, recognition. As oh, well, congratulations. You, well done on this, actually. Uh, thank you. I just started the, the work so other colleagues could continue uh, that work. I, I remember negotiations at the Ministry of Culture, which were not very uh, forthcoming in the beginning. But then, you know, after a couple of uh, discussions, they sort of realized that something needed to be done. Uh, they have taken now the, the fight so the association for uh, better working conditions even further i think uh, the, the uh, you can now become a member of the association of journalists who are who have certain subgroups uh, in their association and one of them is now devoted to audiovisual uh, translation which i think is brilliant because if uh, politicians are afraid of anybody it's the journalists so it's a good association to be in